Welcome to Global Fight Talk. I'm your girl, Lisa Marie. And on the line, we have Sean Blackmagic Spencer. Sean's going to be stepping in the cage next week, UFC 196 in Las Vegas against Mike Pyle. Mike, who's a veteran, a very tough opponent. He's currently 26 and 11. That's a lot of fights. Sean, what's going on? Hey, what's what's up? Um, I mean, there's a lot going on, you know. Um, thanks for the intro. Uh, I want to I want to clear one thing up real quick. Um, uh uh-huh. you know, The the black the black magic nickname, you know that it it doesn't resonate with me like internally anymore. You know, I know that you know it's still on the website. It's still on like Sure Dog. At, you know, it's still on like a couple things as black magic. But I I'm not really going by that right now. You know, uh, I know some people. So what are we going by these days? I, you know, I don't have a nickname right now, you know. I'm just using, using my name for right now. Like, one hasn't come to me yet, you know. And I've been talking to my coach about it, talking to some other people. And, like, you know, I don't think a nickname is something that you can really give yourself, that you know, type of thing. Right. So, it, like, one just hasn't come to me yet. Like, I want it to happen organically, you know, and it just hasn't happened yet. So, but I think the main reason it hasn't happened is because nobody really knows that I'm not going by black magic, you know. So, that's just one of those things. Well, now we're going to put it out there. Sean Spence is no longer going by Black Magic. Nickname is up in the air. Um, and you're right. It's something that somebody has to give you. It just feels, it feels better that way than giving yourself your own nickname. Um, exactly. I think it always works that way. Either a coach or sometimes a commentator winds up giving, you know, a fighter a nickname. Right. And but, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's just probably what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know the future, but, like, that's probably what's going to end up happening, you know. It'd be cool to be nicknamed. Hey, well, well, yeah, well, well best way to get, Joe yeah. Cool. Yeah, there you go. That's what I was going to say. What if Joe Rogan gave you that nickname and it just stuck and it was a good one? And there you go. That'd be really cool. Yeah. But, you know, what? let's talk about this fight. You know, this is a fight that yeah. you were, that was supposed to take place last year, and it yeah. didn't happen. Um, I'm assuming you, there was an injury. Something, something happened, but it didn't happen, and here we are fighting a year later. Um, what do you think is yeah. different from last year to now? Do you think, I mean, that was a, you know, sometimes, sometimes things are, are, are great and, and, you know, are blessed in disguise or, you know, mm-hmm. th- there, there's reasons for everything. Do you think it's, it was one of those things like, hey, um, a year later is probably, a, a, you know, better for me or it was just like, hey, it happened and here we go and it doesn't really matter if it was oh, last man. year or this yeah, year? A hundred percent blessing in disguise, you know, like, you know, could I have you know gone out there and with the injury that I had and 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 beat my my foul? Yeah, I possibly could have, but I you know I just wasn't ready physically. I definitely wasn't ready mentally to uh, to to fight him, you know, and go through the rest of the camp. You know, I needed I needed a break, and I, I took my break, and uh, my body's healed up now, and uh, I'm ready to go. It was definitely a blessing in disguise, and I'm like I'm more ready now than I've ever been in my entire life. So I'm I'm ready. Right. I went through the process. I went through the process of you know, you know, having that downtime and like thinking about you know all those things that that, that come into your head when when you're taking some time off, and uh, you know I'm still on the path. I'm still on the path of you know becoming what I'm supposed to become, and I'm like I'm really really excited about this the moment that I'm in. Let me ask you this: um, you know, you fight for the biggest organization out there, and you know, and everybody. I mean, if 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 fighting is what everyone is, you know, MMA especially. And the UFC is probably every fighter's dream, and, and you're in there. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of fighters in there who does, or are not just as experienced as some of those guys in there, like, for instance, Mike Pyle. But when the UFC calls and says, hey, we got this guy that you're going up against, there's really, there's really, there's really nothing you can do other than say, okay, you know, yes. You know, there's no working your way up in the UFC because everybody right. that's in there are good. Right. Um, do you ever think about that? Um, because I know you. sometimes fighters have that luxury when you're not fighting for a big organization to pick and choose who you want to fight and build your way up. Um, do you ever think about those times and or does this, this, this make you just train even harder because of the type of opponents you're dealing with now? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, when I first made it to the UFC, you know, and like, I didn't know how it was going to happen. Like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, you know, when I fought Hafiel the tall, like, I didn't know that I was going to have to fight Hafiel. I knew that it was going to be one of those things I had to take a fight on short notice because that's what Coach was telling me, you know, but I didn't, yeah. like, in my mind, I first thought, like, 
Okay, it's like you know, it's like okay, you have the, the you know the contract set. You know, I know my opponent type of thing. It's like I've got you know two months to prepare some shit. You know, and it's like it yeah. wasn't like that at all. It was like the exact opposite. Like I took this fight on like eleven days notice, something like that, and it was like a whirlwind of stuff came at me. You know, it was like this is crazy. I'm I made like a part of my dream just came true. I didn't have time to reflect on what was really happening, and it just it. it it was the best, but it, it really sucked because I'm like, I, I didn't think this is how it was going to happen, you know, but you just kind of like, you just got to go through the process of it, you know, like nobody right. can prepare for something like that, you know, you, you're prepared right. in, in the whole thing. It's like you're just in it, you know, and you don't really know. You're like, you try to ask people for advice, like who knows about this? I don't know, you know, right. it's like <laughs> you, you don't know. It's, you're, you're, it's you. You're in it. You are the one, you know what I'm saying? That's what right. I realized, and it's like, you know, I, you know, my, my UFC debut, it was it was cool because, you know, I, I actually fought for the organization that I really wanted to fight for my whole life or the, the, the entire time, time I've been training. You know, I got there, but, it, you know, I lost the fight, and I didn't really know how to take it because I was like, it was kind of a win. I'm in the organization, but I lost the fight, you know, and I was like, all these things going through my head. But, you know, that's definitely something that a young fighter goes through. You know, a young fighter, or you know, even even a veteran, somebody that's been been in the game for a long time, and their their main goal is the UFC, and it's like they finally get there. They can have like ten years of experience or whatever. They finally get there, you know, they're they're ready for that moment because they, you know, because the UFC chose them, and it's like they got there. But um, you know, that's definitely something that pops in their head. They're like, okay, you know, man, this is this is definitely different than what I expected it to be, and you just have to go through the process, man. And like the ones that really. Uh, are gonna do it. They'll shine through those moments. You know, even even if you know you lose your UFC UFC debut, you know they're just you know you're still in there. You know, just go fight your heart out and 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 just be ready for the next fight. You know what I'm saying? Like don't don't be right. don't get discouraged just because don't get discouraged just because you know you lost your UFC debut. You know, just stay in there, man. Like there's been great fighters time and time and time again. You know, uh, lost their UFC debut and now you know getting get to the championship and fighting on the main card and all this stuff. You know, so it happens like that sometimes. Let me let me ask you this. Do you think it's harder to getting getting in to the UFC or once you're in there, stay in there? Oh, definitely once you're in there, stay in there, for sure. Because right. it's like I didn't know I didn't know that once I fought Evan Cutts that I was gonna be in the UFC. I didn't know that. You know, like uh-huh. uh, you know, coaches like, Yeah, just get prepared and you'll be ready at all times. You know, that's that's this that's cliche, but it's like that's the ultimate truth for you. You know, that's, that's the ultimate thing uh, a, a coach can say to uh, one of his students. You know, be ready at all times. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Like he, you know, was probably working on some things. You know, there's some things going on behind the scenes and things like that. I'm fighting my ass off. He's good, coaching his ass off, and he's, like, you know, doing the thing. But it's like I, don't, I didn't know that it was going to be on that such a day or whatever. So right. it's like you've got to be ready at all times, you know. And, like, once you're there, like, okay, you're getting in there. Okay, I beat Evan Cutts. You know, like, that was a cool thing. But then, like, once you're in, you're in. You know, there's no, like, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I wanted to, like, win the UFC. I was like, do I need to win the, uh, the legacy belt to get, you know, to go to the UFC? Mm-hmm. I don't know what I have yeah. to do, really. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and then once I make it to the UFC, I'm like, that was my process. Like, that. I didn't even win the legacy title. Like, why, why was I selected? It's like, it doesn't matter. Right. You're fucking there. You're there. So right. You just do your thing. Do your thing. Like, this is, that was part of your process. You can't, don't, don't go back to legacy and try to, like, Re, you know, redo the past. Like it don't work like that. Just go, just go, just go forward. Go forward. You know, you're in the UFC. That's where you wanted to make it. This is your process. Just go forward. It's it. You know, that's that. That's my. That was. You know, I didn't know this before. You know, I had to learn this in 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 all the all the shit that I've I've gone through and all the stuff. You know, and it's been a, it's been a long journey. You know, and I'm yeah. almost at that ten year mark of, of being an MMA fighter. You know, and uh, right. it, there's a lot of things you go through. A lot of things that people don't see. There's a lot of things that you're not expecting. There's a lot of things that happen that, you know, that you didn't think would really happen or, you know, it's just like a dream type of thing. And, like, you know, some, some of it's a nightmare. You're like, you don't know what's going to happen, but you, you go through it, you do it, you know, just thank God for every day to be alive and living, living out part of your dream, even though some, some days it's hard, and just, and just do it. That's it. Right. Well, definitely everything that you're saying is great. Um, even though, I mean, it's great advice for, for someone who's just getting into the UFC or, or even thinking about getting in the UFC. Um, we're going to talk about your opponent here in a second, but let me ask you this. Do you find yourself, because you are in the UFC, find yourself you're having to train all the time just to be fight-ready? Because, you know, because in there, 
sometimes you have to you wind up replacing somebody on a last minute call. And um, do you find yourself always preparing for that? Uh, yeah, I mean, like you know, last year for me was a really really kooky weird year. You know what I'm saying? It's like I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know, like, since that, that fight with Mike Powell got dropped, you know, and I was like, I don't know where I'm at, really. Like, but I was like, I don't know if I drop in position. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if the UFC still wants me. I don't know what to do, you know. It's like, yeah, I need mean, to prepare and train and, you know, be ready and things like that, but I don't know what's going to happen, you know. And it's like, if they, like, if, if six months ago, if they had called me up for a short notice fight, I was like, I don't, I, I, I can't do it. I cannot. I'm yeah. not even, even close to being ready. For anything, right? You know what I'm saying, right? Uh, but um, as far as you know, a fighter being ready at every moment, like being like feeling like you need to be in the gym all the time and stuff like that, that you know those things do cross your mind. But you know that 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 can draw stress on you. You know what I'm saying? That can put a lot of stress on you. But here, the thing about it is that you have to you have to really just live out live out the life of a fighter. You have to live out the life of a fighter. If you call yourself a fighter, you are a fighter, you have, to be, you have to fall in love with the process of, you know, keeping your body in shape at all times. You know, you have to be in love with that process. You know, and then once you, once you okay, just say, for instance, you, you, you got out of shape real bad. You know, you got out of shape real bad. Yeah, you know, and, and, and like, that happens you know, you to fighters. <laughs> that, hell yeah, it happens to fighters. It happened to me. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. sucks. It sucks. <laughs> and then it's like, then you become a normal person. You're like, uh, uh, you know, I don't... I, you look at the gym that you're at, and you see all these people that are, like, training their ass off, and then they, the people that look up to you and shit, and it's like, I'm not, even, I'm not even close to being what you think I am, like, right now. You know what I'm saying? But right. they're looking at me. They're looking at me. They're looking at other guys like they're, like they're it, you know? And it's like, I'm not it at all because I'm, I'm, I fell off so bad, you know? But then once you get past that process, you, you get back in the gym, get your feet, get your feet wet, uh, at Octagon, it ain't no, it ain't no getting your feet wet. You're just like in, you're in the deep end. You're swimming with the sharks. But it's like right. once you do, do, get in there and do that, go through all those those thoughts of you know being out of shape and this and that. And then you know once your body comes back to where it needs to be, and then your mind you know, catches up. You have to get your mind there first. But then your body will follow. You know your mind and just go through the process. Like get in the gym every single day. You know take time off when you need to. Uh, or whatever, but then just like just stay focused on the process. Get in the gym every day, no matter what. No matter what it is, it doesn't have to be hard sparring every day. You don't have to get out, you know, beat somebody's ass every day. You don't have to get your ass beat every day. You don't have to put your body through all this shit. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, uh what's it called? Um, go 100 percent, 24 seven. Well, yeah, exactly. You don't have to go 100 percent. You don't have to like beat your body down every day. You know, there's right. different ways to build yourself up. But it's, it's going back to your question, you know, is that something uh, like, you know, uh, being ready at every moment, like is that something that, you know, goes uh, into a fighter's mindset and all that? Yeah, it, it does. But you have to be you have to be ready for the process. You have to be fall in love with the process of being a top-level MMA fighter, you know, a top-level UFC fighter. You have to be, fall in love with that process and then remain consistent through the process. You know, that's how that's how champions are made. That's how... That's how people become great at what they do. You know, it's just being diligent with the process. And I had a conversation with a, a, a friend of mine earlier, uh, Boom 1000. He's a rap artist out of Dallas. You know, we were just talking about how, you know, P. Diddy, P. Diddy, you know, I don't know P. Diddy. You know, I, I follow him on Instagram. That's about it. But, you know, he was saying that P. Diddy, you know, he attacks the game that he's in like, like it's, it's his first day. Like he's never made it anywhere. You know, and that's the that's the right. mindset you have to have. You can't sit there and look at yourself like, oh, I made it to the UFC, I'm the shit now. No, you're not the shit. What have you done? You know, you have to tell somebody else you might be the shit. But, you know, this is life, man. Like, we're not bigger than God, you know. We're not bigger than than, than anything. We're just, we're, we come from the dirt of the earth. You know what I'm saying? We're not anything special like that. But people become special when they realize that. It's like, you're not, you're not it. You just, you know, you're just part of this whole, this whole process of life. This whole you know, process. It's deep. It's exactly. Deep. It's so deep. It's deep, you know. It's deep, you know. All it's deeper see. than what other people see. Oh it's, man, it's deeper it's than what deep. the 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 physical form that that people oh. see. But it's so much deeper. I mean, we can yeah. get that. That's like a whole different uh, yeah. uh, conversation right. when yeah, we. I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to go. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get on that level. But that's where it, like it's. it's yeah, no, no. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 so much deeper than that. 
Yeah, yes. it's so much deeper than what everyone sees. Um, just like you were saying, uh, and that conversation could be a four hour, four hour, or even oh, more yes. um, conversation yes. about what you and I, uh, you know, are talking about. But let me quote this from Nick Diaz because you, you said you have to fall in love with the process. I was watching a documentary on Nick, Nick Diaz, and he said that that you have to love it so much that you hate it. Mm, Is that yeah. true? You know, uh, I, you know. Here's here's. The it's thing. like a love and hate relationship. Yes, is that it is it is. Isn't that, I don't know what part of the process he was in when he said that. I don't know if I've gotten to that level, but I I know one thing. I have fucking. I, I sorry. I have thought that before. I had to be like, you know what? I must love. I mean, I must really love this because I really hate it right now. I'm going to the gym every day, busting my ass. You know, and it's like I reached the point of point in the uh, in my career where I was just going through the motions. I was like, I must love this because I'm I'm here and I don't want to be here. I'm just doing I'm doing right. this because you know it, you know this is what I chose to do, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn back now. And those thoughts go through your mind like, oh. Man, did I do did I do something wrong? Did, did this is the right career path for me? You know, those those thoughts cross your mind. We're, we're human beings. You know, even Conor McGregor's had those thoughts. I'm, I'm sure of it. You know, and it's like yeah. you doubt yourself. But you had to put, push past that doubt and, and and just go into certainty. You know, and we've all we've all had those moments. And it, it could be you know, you, oh, could yeah. have, you, you could you could have thought about being a uh, being a doctor. Or you could have thought about. Uh, you know, I don't know, shoot, like, what's, what's another job? Like, whatever job, whatever career path you go into, you can go into, like, finances and things like that. Like, there's part, there's like parts of every single thing you go into that's going to be really hard and it's going to push you, you know? And it's like, it's, are you going to be willing to go through the process of it, you know? Right. And to become, like, best at it or, or whatever, get to where you want to be. And that's just something right. that goes through, through everybody's mind. Uh, so... I don't know what was the question. <laughs> Who was that? No, just kidding. No, we were just talking about Nick Diaz's quote. You gotta oh, love Nick it. Diaz. Yeah, I love yeah, it. It's a Nick love Diaz, and hate do, situation. Yeah, it, is lo- it is. It is. It is like that. It is. It's a relationship, man. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. Yeah, and you have to be. You got to be one hundred percent committed to yeah. to your your career. And there's no cheating because if you cheat, then you wind up losing. It it it, exactly. it is. Almost, it, it is a cheat. relationship. Right. You know, you know how rappers talk about, oh, I'm married to the game, blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah it is. It's a marriage. It is. Like, you can't sit there. And, you can't cheat on your wife. Like you can't cheat on the <laughs> the, the, the situation. You can't because it, it you know, one, it's just like and then it, it just messes up the whole thing because it's like you know what you reap is what you sow type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like MMA, MMA is a you know, is a thing that people do. And it, but it's like if you if you cheat on your diet, if you Cheat on your workouts. If you do this, you know you're gonna reap what you sow. You're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get your ass kind of handed to you a little bit if you uh, if you cheat type of thing. You know, and it's like yeah, you, you can't expect to win. Cheat. Yeah, you can't expect yeah. to win that, if you're cheating. That's what makes it yeah. exactly, and that's what makes it even worse for MMA fighters. Which this is what we we we, we step into the thing knowing this, and people kind of like want the fame and want the glory and all this. But the bad part about it is that if you're not on your game, or not on point at all times. It's going to be shown in front of millions and millions of people, you know, and then you're going to have to live that out for the rest of your life if you don't get a chance to redeem yourself. So that's what makes it so – that's what makes it suck, but that's what makes it so glorious at the same time because if you go through the process and you actually do your thing and you fucking do it, like get in there and do it, then then it just blows up and you're like, now your life is great or whatever. And then you have to, like, you know, go through that and then like stay humble in those moments, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like that's just how it is. That's just how it is. I'm glad you brought that part up because my next question is going to go back to probably the most um, declarated fighter. Well, I want to say one of, okay, where where media just blew her up, you know, and that's Ronda Rousey. And you said if you want, you know, losing in front of the whole world, it's one thing to lose on a local event, and everybody from local media, you know, friends and family knows. But when you lose in front of the whole world, you either become a joke and everything you've done to that point means nothing and you were nothing and you just it just seems like you just lost. Like at what at what point 
do you have to be so mentally – I mean, the game is just not physically. It's mental because there's so many mm-hmm. keyboard – Board warriors out there want to be fighters that never fought a day in their lives say the meanest and harshest things. That's one thing about the UFC. When you lose, you lose bad, you know, especially when you're on top. Do you ever think about stuff like that? I mean, and, and remaining humble is probably one of the biggest things as a fighter to, to remain humble because if you're not humble, you know, one thing I've always said, if, if you don't humble yourself, life will humble it for you. <laughs> Yeah, you exactly. always think about exactly. that. Yeah, yeah, it's not like something I always think about. It's definitely something that resonates with me, though. Um, as yeah. far as Ronda Rousey goes, Ronda Rousey, I mean, she like she catapulted and she did it with a lot of grace, a lot of style, a lot of attitude, a lot of a lot of a lot of things, a lot of like just beauty, elegance. But she did it. She did it. You know, she did her thing, man. And she was like a tomboy type person, you know. And she's you know, if she was like an average chick or whatever, like people would like yeah, it wouldn't even like really, you know look at her twice really but she made it to that level and she like you know it was just her her image was glorified and beautified you know and she like grown along along with that process which makes it that much more attractive you know what i'm saying so it's like that's just that's just what what she did and she just mentally prepared mentally focused and you know she had a good upbringing with like her mom i heard her say something about her mom was to make her do r bars and stuff or in in the middle of the night in her sleep yeah (laughs) yeah in her sleep yeah in her sleep you know so that you know that was part of her process you know and like she just took those things she learned from childhood and like took them into her adulthood which is awesome you know but yeah it's one of those things man like you lose like she lost to Holly Holmes you know uh thankfully you know she wrote uh Ronda Rousey rose to a level to where she could kind of bounce back and like to have that not affect her but it did affect her I'm I'm sure that you know like any fighter that is worth anything and has pride about themselves, like, losing like that will, will affect you. But she made the mental choice to not let it affect her, like, that bad. You know, she, she's using it as motivation, I'm sure. You know, because she still had a lot of other things planned. You know, she just did SNL. Like, that's awesome. You know, right. like, that's really cool, you know. You can't sit there and do SNL thinking about, you know, Holly Holm beating your ass in front of, you know, in front of millions of people, you know, when everybody's expecting you to win. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't think exactly. about those things. So she put that. She put the past behind her. She's moved forward. You know, and she's going to become a better person because of, because of it. So that was part of her process. But uh, I mean, those are things that that do cross my that have crossed my mind. Like, oh man, I, do I want to continue to go deeper into this game? Because now I see the now I see the end result. If I don't bust my ass and I get my ass kicked in front of millions of people, like you know, this is you know, this is gonna it's gonna suck. But it's like, okay, do I do I pull off and, and park here, or do I feel like do I just you know put that Put my put my bitch in a, in a in a fifth gear and and just go and go, like change gears. Yeah, go to third gear, then go to fourth gear, then go to fifth gear and sixth gear, and maybe there's a seventh gear up there. I don't know, but you just got to be committed to the process of of doing it and and what you know let the chips fall where they may and 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 all that stuff. So, but yeah, that's definitely something that crosses our minds, and that's what sometimes you see fighters like you know they they're badass fighters and stuff you know and then it's like you know next thing you know they they kind of suck and like why is that happening to them it's because of the mental the mental process like do they still want to go through this process of becoming the greatest every every fighter in the UFC wants to be the greatest but it's like you know there's it's a shark tank you know like not everybody can be the greatest like at one at one at one time you know it's only one chance you know so it's like you have to fight through you have to make your money make your mark do this thing and like just hope and pray to God that it works out to the best uh, right. in your favor type of thing. Yeah, you, know, you, so you, you got to you gotta be, yeah, you got to be unique. So you, you got to be unique. And, and if you're going to go that route, I believe, in, in it, you know, yeah. the, the Ronda Rousey route, the Conor McGregor route, Nick Diaz the route, when I'm talking about that route, I'm talking about being very open and blunt. When you're open and yeah. blunt and stuff like that, you wind up getting what you ask for, you know, and um, oh, you mean, and, you mean, and if you get back, yeah, if you get back, if you get back it up, that's thing? even more. Yeah. I'm sorry, you saying yeah. what? Are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we talking about it in a, in, a, in a negative sense, like when you when you like, what were, like what were you saying? You said if you talk. No, either like, way, I'm just saying. I'm just saying either way. If if you decide to go that route, I mean Ronda Rousey. I mean I I I I, I got to hand it to her. She she did a fabulous, a phenomenal job you know, putting women out there, you know, women's oh, MMA. Yeah. If it wasn't for her, um, we probably wouldn't be talking about, um, you know, Holly Holm or Sarah McMahon, no. Misha Tate, yeah. none of these women, or even boxing, period, because women's boxing has even, even, even 
got an inch of that, and I just don't yeah. get it, and I don't understand. But, yeah. you know, she got there because, yes, yeah, she's beautiful and she's very talented. You know, she won the Olympics, but she also voiced her opinion very yeah. in a way that caught a lot of people's attention. And I'm talking about, like, people, like, in, in that point where Conor McGregor is the same way. I mean, you've seen him the way he is, Nick Diaz. They're just very blunt. And these are the people – it's crazy because a lot of fans draw to people like that. If you're quiet and humble, you're like, oh, okay, they're good, cool. But people draw to people who are loud and, you know, and very blunt and sometimes yeah. mean. Yeah. And, and, and people yeah, draw to drama. Right, that's true, that's true. And it's not, it's not about, it's not all about being, you know, trying to portray this image like, oh, I'm a tough dude, I'm this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's really, what it is, it's, it's all about the truth, it's facts, and, you know, being right and being clear in your heart and being clear in your mind. You know, when you, when you can, anybody can sit there and talk loud, like, oh, you're having the shit, blah, 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 the same, all kind of crazy stuff, but if it doesn't make sense, like, if it's like, you know, it may make sense to a lot of people, but if it's like, if really, if, that, if it's in your mind you're like a weak person or something, and you're talking all loud, like, like there, there, the real people will, will figure it out, and you only get so far doing that. You know, there's a lot of people that's made a lot of money doing things like that, but the, 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 best, the best case scenario of, of, of doing that is being true, being true and pure in your heart and being true and pure in your mind, knowing the facts, and just being true and real to who you are. That's, what, that's how you're able to, to talk loud because you can, you can back up what you say because it's, it's just the truth. You know, and then that's how you get doubters and hate, like haters and stuff like that. Because like, how is he saying all this? He because he really believes it, and he, he you know, he, he's 100 percent true and pure in his heart. Like that's why. That's why Conor McGregor can talk the way he does. That's why Ronda Rousey can say the shit that she says. Uh, that's why, um, you know, whoever else is on, on the top right now can talk that that shit because they really believe it. And they they're doing it time and time again. That's what it's all about. It's right. about it's about re- reality. It's about reality. It's not about being a tough guy. It's not about being this strong girl, being able to beat everybody's ass. It's about being real, being true, and being pure, no matter what you're in. It's a, you know, if I was in fight, if I wasn't in fighting, I would try to do the same thing as something else, like a rap artist or you know, a sonic therapist. Like, it doesn't matter. You know, you just have to be true and real and, 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 you know, with who you are. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really all it boils down to. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. You know, we we talked about Ronda Rousey's loss and and how it, how you know losing in front of the world you know you're you know everybody's lost in their life and we all reflect on it we either learn it learn from it or we move on from it you know some people say loss is a loss that's in my past not necessarily that can't be in your past because that's something you always think about and that's going to drive you to become better and not make that same mistake or or try to figure out what it could have i done to, you know, win the fight? Do I need to be more active? Should I, you know, because, you know, Sean, to be honest, you know, the worst thing that a fighter can hear, and this is me, in my opinion, the worst thing that I hate when people say that don't understand, have never stepped in the ring, and I even find some fighters saying this and coaches, is, well, you can't leave it in the hand of the judges. Just, you just got to knock them out mm-hmm. next time. Well, no right, shit. Right. No shit. Yeah. You can't knock right, out everybody, first of all. Right. right. You can't knock out that. everybody, right. first of all. And, and, right. and you know what? And, and if you, yeah, you, I'm like, well, I tried to knock him out, but obviously, you know, he's tough and, and you know, or I just don't have the knockout power or whatever. And, and sometimes you're just not fighting your opponent. Sometimes you're fighting the judges. And that goes back to your last fight that you had, right? You had a controversial decision lost. And, um, and one of the things that I saw when you had an interview on MMA Junkie, you said you did not want to be a decision fighter. But what happens when you can't knock out that person? What do you do? What, what can you do after that? Because, like I said, you can't knock out everybody. All right. Well, I mean, what did you learn from that loss? I mean, I know that you that that's in your past, and you don't want to talk about it. But what did you do different? Uh, what did you go back home and say, like, I should have done this, or my next time I'm going to make sure I'm going to do this, so this won't happen again? Yeah, um, I mean, that's that's a that's a good question. But it's like it's one of those things, like you know, your learning process. I mean, it could last longer than what you thought. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I I grew, I, I'm still growing. Well, I've grown up a lot since, you know, the Cajal Pedro fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I, like, I could have, you know, the, the, the day the fight was over, kind of, like, decided to grow through that moment and grow. In it. I, you know, when I said on MMA Junkie, I didn't want to be a decision fighter. That's true. I don't want to be a decision fighter. But it's like, yeah, you can't knock out everybody. But I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really, like, that fight right there, it kind of discouraged me, you know, a, a lot. Because, not because of, you know, the judges or anything else, because, of, like, in myself. Like, I was just making a lot of wrong decisions at that point, you know, and I had, you know, people were, like, kind of, like, praising the whole thing, like, man, you know, Spencer got robbed and all, and all this and that, like, you know, saying I won, you know, which, yeah, I was like, watch the fight, yeah, I won the fight or whatever, what, it doesn't matter, but it's like, I felt like It's on I your record. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's on my record, yeah, 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 it's cool, whatever, but it's like, I felt like I lost because, uh, because, um, the, 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 the decisions I was making leading up to the fight, you know, like, my head wasn't all the way in the game, I knew I was a better fighter than the Hall Pitchers. You know, I, I knew that, but it was like I was making some, some bad decisions, you know. I was doing some things I wasn't supposed to do. You know, I wasn't staying true to the game, you know. And, like, right. going into a fight, knowing that you weren't making all the right decisions, like, you know, that fighter, he, yeah, he might not be a better fighter than you, but he may have been making so many right decisions, like cardio-wise and, you know, focus man. He might suck as a fighter, you know, but he might beat you up because uh, just because he's been doing the work, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, thankfully my, my talent and, you know, what I've learned over the years, like, it shines through, but I could have done so much better, you know, and that's, like, that was what my mindset was, and, like, I was discouraged in myself because I was making so many wrong decisions, and, you know, I, yeah, I felt like I won the fight uh, after I watched it, but at the same time, after the fight, even though people were praising it, like, oh, Spencer got robbed, blah, 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 I felt like I lost because I, because I wasn't staying true to the game, you know, I cheated on the game, and, you know, I was like, man, and that's what we being, go back talking about earlier. Yeah. You know, exactly. talking about earlier, cheating, you, you can't cheat. <laughs> exactly. I cheated on the game, and somehow, some way, I still, like, you know, I, I lost, but I really, but everybody's saying I was going to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you weren't, you know, you weren't with me when I did this or that. You know what I'm saying? So I had to, like, revamp things. And, yeah, and the UFC saved me my win, my win bonus and everything, which, you know, that's a blessing, but it kind of was like, I don't, I don't feel like I deserve this. Why are you, you know, giving me this type of thing, you know? Uh, but, it, but it is what it is, man. You know, uh, everything, everything happens for a reason. I'm glad for, I'm glad for every single moment that have happened in my career, in my life, you know what I'm saying, let, to let me up, lead me up to this moment, you know what I'm saying? So um, as far as, like, what I learned, I've learned a lot, you know, and, and my, my process of learning is still continuing, you know. I, I plan to never stop learning, you know, but um, – you know, I've learned a lot even in the last, like, two months of my life. You know, ever since the UFC uh, Athlete Summit, you know, even even during the UFC Athlete Summit back in, I think it was, like, October, I still was kind of like, I was still was like one foot in, one foot out type of thing. You know, and I'm, I'm not afraid I'm not afraid or ashamed to say that because that's part of my process. And, you know, uh, if somebody wants to say, oh, this dude, you know, he is out of shape here and there, it doesn't matter because I learned from it. I learned from it all. You know, and I'm, I'm back. Right. I'm back to where I need to be. I'm back to where I need to be. I ain't the same person I was then, you know, so... Um, but anyway, you know, the things that, going to the fight, the fight preparation part of it, you know, not being a a decision fighter, you just have to go in, um, in your rounds. You have to go and you have to just commit to that. Like on your Tuesday nights or your Thursday nights, you spar or whatever. You have to just mentally commit to, to, to finishing or dominating this person that's in front of you, you know, and you don't have to hurt your training partners. There's a fine line between hurting training partners and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and, you know, obliterating them and blowing them out the water. You know, you don't want to hurt your guy. You don't want to cut them. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to damage them because, you know, a lot of these guys are friends. Like, I'm friends with a lot of my, my training partners, you know, so it's a, it's a fine line. It's like, like Sean Holden. Like, I, I love that guy. You know, I don't want to, like, I don't want to damage him. You know, I know his, I know his wife. I know, I know his family. I don't want to, like, I don't want to hurt him. You know what I'm saying? But this is the business. This is the nature of the beast that we're in. You know what I'm saying? We have to, we have to do that. If I don't go out there and hurt him, it, it it really it hurts me and it hurts him because he's in the he's in the game too, you know. So you have yeah. to you have to go hard. You have to go hard or go home. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So that that's what that's what it's all about. So as far as finishing fights go, you have to have the mindset to actually finish. You may not finish everybody. Like if everybody has the same mindset, like go out there and fucking destroy and dominate and stuff. Uh, you know, um, you know, who knows what would happen in the UFC? But you know, you have to just. 
you have to commit and you have to go and you have to really try to win. And if this dude doesn't break under your barrage of punches and things like that, then he's he's just a great man just as you are. You know what I'm saying? But if you break him and beat you him have to you have to be like mentally that, strong. Do you have to be? I don't mean yeah. to cut you off, but do you think when when you're giving a hundred? I mean, you you're going all out and you're you're throwing everything but the kitchen sink, and this dude just does mm-hmm. not fall. Does that do something to you mentally? Like, fuck, man, uh, you don't want to go do, down. What, what do I do next? No, no, no. no. It it won't. You know, you can think that, you know, but if anything, if you have trained your ass off and you, like, you know you're going to destroy this person, you really believe in your mind, and then you go out there and you try to do it, and you're, like, trying to blow him out the water, and he's, like, meeting you with the same intensity that you're fighting him, and he does, like, you blow him out, like, you're going going hard at him, and then he's about to go, and then he comes back, that's where, that's where, that's the, that's the heart of MMA. That is the heart of combat sports. That is where you see right. people hugging at the end of the fight. That's why that happens because it's like, you, I am a fucking monster, and I tried to kill you, and I usually would kill anyone else, but you're a monster just like me. And, like, I love you because of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just fought our ass off, but that's where, that's respect. That's respect in mixed martial arts. That is, that is the purity of mixed martial arts. That's what it comes from. You see? And, th- um, and, that's, and that's what your fight fans, your, you know, People have never been in the in a fight that will always miss, and they will never never understand is the emotional part of it, right? They yeah. they will yeah. never understand what you will go through mentally before, during, and after. They'll never know what it's like to be hit. They'll never know what it's like to be to doubt yourself or other people doubt you. They don't know what it's like you know, to have that moment to yourself where you may have cried or doubted yourself or, you know, just anything. And or that moment of victory and glory, they will never understand that part. And I think um, a lot of people, those are arguments that a lot of people have with people behind the computer <laughs> knocking these fighters down, whether they suck or not or got knocked out. Yeah. They'll never understand that part of the game. Never, yeah, and and, and only and only fighters only fighters will understand that, and 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 I think that's I, I think the world, you know, for for whether it's boxing or MMA or whatever, that step in that in that ring or cage, um, you you can never get that back, that that moment, that feeling, and that's why I will always, you know, have someone's back for a fighter you know, when somebody talks down on them because that's the part they will never understand. They shouldn't even be talking, period. But other than that, you're fighting next week. Yeah, that's good. That's good, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 fight next week, man. Uh, You're fighting next week. Let's talk about Mike Powell, man. This dude, you know, he he has over, I mean, mean, he's like 26 and 11, man, close to 40 fights. You know, he's been in the game for a long time. He's fought uh, a lot of, a lot of guys. What do you think about this fight? I mean, he, he's, you know, he's good on the ground, you know, standing. Um, stylistically, I mean, where does this fight go for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a very interesting matchup. You know, and uh, he, he does have a lot of a wealth of experience. He has a lot of knowledge. A lot. He brings a lot to the game still, uh, even though he's, you know, up in age. It doesn't matter. You know, people are getting, you know, I think, you know, sometimes people can age, you know, they can get better with age, you know what I'm saying? So right. you know, I have the, the youth. I have the youth advantage over him, you know. But he's got like mm-hmm. you know. He, you could say he's got the experience advantage over me and stuff like that. But, yeah, uh, he, he he has a lot of interesting threats. You know, he's he's like a black belt jiu-jitsu, and like he's you know he's slick. He has a lot of you know slick movements. He's good on top. He's good from the bottom. You know, he's you know he's knocks guys out. He's got he's got power. He's got you know uh, stability. He's got you know he's got he, he brings a lot of interesting uh, you know uh, things to the game and. Um, a lot of uh, you know, uh, a lot of things that I have to watch out for, you know. But right. you know, with that, I have to. I don't so much have to counter what he does. I just have to be better at what I want to do than he is what as he, what he wants to do, you know. I'm, right. I'm prepared for what he's got on the on the ground. I'm prepared for what he's got on on, on the feet. Um, I'm prepared to go in there and, and go three rounds if need be. I'm prepared to go out there and blow him out the water in in, in a minute or two minutes. This is you know. I don't. I can't predict the future. You know, so I, right. I I just know that I'm gonna give it all I got, you know, for the amount of time that I'm gonna be in there. 
you know what I'm saying, whether that be for 30 seconds or whether that be for 15 minutes. Uh, that's really all I have to say about that. You know, and, and you know, I don't know Mike Powell, you know, uh, in terms of him as a person. Uh, all I know is what I've seen on tape, you know, and what I've uh, heard from you know, people have have trained with him, you know, here and there or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm not trying to look into his life. I don't. I don't need to know his life. All I need to know is he's he's another man that's going to go out there and you know uh, be in the center of the octagon with me and is trying to, to take my take my life, take where I uh, take what I've done and 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 try to keep it in the past. You know, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to go out there and uh, you know uh, uh, go into uh, obscurity. You know, I'm not going to do it. You know, and if he wants to meet me with the same intensity. Then it's going to be a great right. fight, you know. I mean, be five, it might be in the, it might be five the night or something like that, you know. But either way, it's like it's it's balls to the wall, and you know, he's gonna be ready. I'm gonna be ready, and I'm just gonna fucking do it. I'm sorry, I'm cussing, but I, I'm like, you know, I feel I feel good right now. But it, 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 uh, yeah, it, it's not live, so you, you're all good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You're, 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 you're all good. Whatever. Please. You can. Yeah. But, but anyway, dude, I, that's just how it's gonna be, man, and that's just how I feel, and. You know, I've I've learned a lot through this whole process, and I'm just like, you know, I'm thankful that I actually I got here, you know, and it's it's you know, and it's like I have to, you know, I know that there are there are a lot of different belief systems, a lot of different religions, a lot of different this. There's people that don't believe in God. There's you know this. There's atheists. There's Christians. There's Hindus. There's Buddhism. There's you know whatever else. There's who knows out there, but. All I know is, like, what in my heart, like, I, I'm connected with God. I feel connected with God. And, you know, in, this, in my life, you know, um, you know, the, through the whole process, even, like, the past, this past year, you know, this, this is what goes, like, for me, it goes to, like, the, to the grace of God. Like, the grace of God is what got me to this point. Like, if I, if I wasn't in grace, making some of the, the you know, mistakes and decisions that I have made in my life, I wouldn't be at this moment, you know, or I would have this moment and I would have, like, I wouldn't have realized that I'm still in this, this great moment and I would have just left it, I would have left it and brushed it on the rug like it never happened and I would have been, I would have been nothing and I would have been regretful for the rest of my life, you know, but. Great I, grace I is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's the best. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's awesome, man. <laughs> oh, man, it's the best. It's the best. And, like, I realized that. You know, and it's taken a lot of time, and I rebelled against that. I, I saw that a while ago, but I, I rebelled against it because I was so I was so stubborn. I was I was so afraid that I would I would you know I would lose or I would I would fail or I would not make my family proud. But what happens if you don't go through that fear? Then all those things that you all those things that you don't want to happen will happen because you you, you turned away from the, your goals and your dreams uh, and, and all those things. And that's what that's what happens. You know, and I'm just thankful that I can say that I'm still in the grace of God, and I'm, I'm going I'm to continue, I'm going to grow through the process, and, you know, February 6th is, you know, that's part of my process, you know, and that's just, that's just a, a, you know, a, a bookmark. In, another in stepping stone to where you need to, where you need to go. It's just exactly. a, another that's stepping all, that's stone. That's all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. Let's talk about, let's, let's talk about your team, your coaching staff, your training camp. Yep. Um, yep. how, how's that coming along? Um, I know you have, you know, the great safe you know, at Octagon MMA, yeah. you, you have a lot of killers at, at your yeah. gym, yeah. you know, and, and, a, and a couple that, uh, that, a few that I know personally. And um, let's talk about that. How's training? Yeah, no, training, man, training is going absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to say this, like, you might see a fighter, you know, like, just in the, in the, in the gym, like, uh, you know, like on TV doing his thing, like hitting the mitts and, like, you know, just lifting weights and, like, just hardcore beating ass, you know, it may be a good day for him. But there's a lot of bad days that happen in the gym, too. And, you know, because oh, yeah. uh, fighting never fighting never stops, you know. So it's like uh, you might just call that dude on a good day. But I've had a lot of bad days in the gym. You know, like this, the first, the first, the, the very first week at training camp, <laughs> the very first week at training camp, I injured my left shoulder. And I can say that now because it's totally healed and it's, oh, it's okay. But, like, the first week mm-hmm. of training camp, it was, like, the second or third day. I'm in there. No, it was the first day, the first official day. I'm in there. Oh, wow. And I get tossed. I get tossed. I get tossed and dropped on my left shoulder, and it just, like, it just crunched and did all kind of stuff that I was, like, I knew it was bad, you know. I tried to fight through it. Like, it didn't happen, but it happened, you know. It was some, some tendon stuff going on or whatever, and, uh, you know, I went and got an X-ray. The X-ray came back negative. You know, I knew it wasn't my collarbone, but my coach told me to just go ahead and do it, uh, you know, because he cares about me and stuff. But like, 
Um, you know, I knew it was a collarbone. I just I knew there was tendon damage going on, and uh, you know, the, the chiropractor told me to treat it like a hairline fracture. You know, so treat it like a hairline, hairline fracture, fracture is a lot worse than an actual broken. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, maybe. I've I had, the, the reason why I say, well, a, a hairline fracture is not, you know, where it's just like, I mean, I can't really explain it, but I remember I broke my hand a day before I was supposed to fight. This was a few years ago. And I was like, you know what, I'm still going to fight. But the pain and for it to get to heal is a lot longer than it would if it was broken. You know, you got, you got I don't know, you're in a cast for, what, six weeks, I guess? That a hairline fracture takes longer to heal. I mean, I mean, I guess people are different or whatever, but that's what I was told. I guess I, I don't know. You you might have some some crazy bones that heal faster than mine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Once I start, no. Once I start getting into my my groove and stuff like that, I start healing like an X Man. I'm I'm thankful that I have that ability. Yeah. You know, and to God be the glory for that for real. Cause yeah. I, mean, I can't. Definitely. I mean, I can't do. I can't do it. With, you know, without you know, without that. But anyway, on a uh, yeah, so shoulders injured first first day of training camp, and uh, you know, I was discouraged. I was my first thought that popped in my head is this cannot happen because I fighting Mike Powell, a guy that I already was in, you know supposed to fight, and I already got injured in training camp, and I couldn't ha- I can't have this happen again. I will be done. I will be done. My life my life won't be over, but my career will be over. You know, I'm fighting this fight, you know, whatever whatever the case may, may be. But it, I still went through those discouraging thoughts and things like that. And then I was like, man, I just have to, you know, fight through this. It's the first week or first day of training camp, so this is that's perfect timing for an injury to happen, you know. Uh, if, if there's a mm-hmm. perfect time for an injury to happen, it's, it's the first day of training camp, so you can, like, heal yourself through it. But anyway, my first thought was, man, okay, this sucks. You know, I, I'm going to just take a couple of days off, you know. And you know, and just like let it heal. I'm gonna rest it. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna do anything for it. Real. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna do some therapy and just like relax my body and just let it heal. You know, in a couple of days, kind of like get back in the gym and just take it easy. But I didn't do that. What I did was, uh, and I don't know how this happened or what. Somebody it just kind of like it was just, uh, something in the air. Somebody said, "Yo, you probably should do some yoga." I don't remember who said it. I don't know. It's just a thought that popped in my head, and and I was like, man, I don't know about yoga. Um, I mean, it's, I just don't. I don't know. It's like I'm not, I, I, you know, I, I've done some yoga in the past, but I, you know, it just wasn't really my thing. But uh, you know, so I just signed up for this yoga, and uh, I started doing it the very next day because I was like, maybe I should just wait a couple of days and then start doing yoga. No, when you get injured and you can kind of still, you can still be mobile or whatever. That, that's the that's the right day to start. Start doing it, yeah. You know, so so I started doing yoga the very next day. My shoulder was already jacked up, you know. So um, I went and saw my chiropractor, blah blah. blah and I started, to, you know, we got everything together. I went to yoga, and uh, you know, started doing yoga. And uh, the first, the very first day, I freaking, I couldn't even do a side plank, you know. And mm-hmm. I was just like, oh my god! I'm like looking around at these people. These people aren't fighters or nothing. I don't know anything about these people. Lots, so I know they're not fighters. And I'm like, I can't even do a side plate for these people, you know. And it's just like it was really discouraging. You know, this is, I was like, this is BS. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna do something else because like being in that that room and like, knowing these people weren't fighters and then them being able to like do better stuff than me was like it was a hit <laughs> to my, my pride or something. And seriously, that's what I thought. Really, I it like, really you know was. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, this is stupid, man. I'm like, they're better over than yoga. Doing better than... Yeah, yeah. And, like, it just like really got to me. So I was just like, you know, this is, you know, all the thing about yoga too is like, you know, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it's all about process. You know, like me feeling that way was part of my process. You know, I had that's something internally I have to have to I have to struggle with. So I need to go through that. I have to grow through that. You know, just something as simple as that. You know, I have to grow through that 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 uh, that pride level stuff. You know, and like kind of stick with it. You know, and I, that's what I did. I just said I'm not. Gonna, I'm turned away from that that thought I had. And I was like, these are good people. Whatever, whatever. I know they're not fighters, but they, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, you know, yoga is all about yourself. It's about your internal self and, like, what you have to bring to the table. It's not about everybody else, you know. So I, I learned that through the process, and I, I stuck with the yoga, you know, you know, two weeks in, I got better. Three weeks in, I got even better. Four weeks in, I got even better. Five weeks in, I'm, I'm doing really good. I'm hitting the poses. Six weeks in, I think I'm on the six weeks Well, hold on. Did you say you, you know, were hitting the poses now? <laughs> you were posing the for poses? the frame now? <laughs> 
Yeah. You, you got, yeah, you got, you got pictures park. of those? Do you, do you, do you, do you no, I, I don't. Now? I haven't. Taking that yoga no. places? <laughs> exactly. I, I, yeah, I'm not trying to do that. Like, I've thought about doing that, putting some stuff on Instagram. But I was like, I'm not going to put that out there just yet because, for one, my coach is going to be like, what the hell? And then, you know, I just, I'm just not ready for I'm just not ready for that Yeah, you know. And people just don't. Yeah, it's okay. you, you, you're, not, you're not ready for that life right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm not ready for that life right now. But, uh, but other than that, you know, like, I think, I don't know. I don't know how many weeks. It was like maybe a week before Christmas is when I started doing yoga. So, like, at three, four weeks in, this, this, you know, this lady, I progressed so far so fast. And I'm, 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 I'm progressing also, too, because I know I have a fight coming up, you know, so I'm, like, taking it really serious. So, uh, you know, the, the, the instructor comes up to me and, like, wants me to do the teacher training program, you know. You should become a yoga teacher. I'm like, what? I'm, I didn't even expect to do yoga. I'm not even supposed to be here right now, you know. Like, the only reason I'm here is because my left shoulder got hurt. You know, that's the only reason I'm here. You know, she's, like, talking about doing the teacher training, this and this and that. Hold on, like, hold on, know, son. Let, 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 let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. How <laughs> let me find out you into all these yoga, you got yoga yoga pants and yeah, you yeah. are into. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, like, 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 you know, have, like, there's a name. You know, like, they have name for Star Trek. They, they, there's the Trekkies. I, I, they, I know they got a name for people who are like really serious into yoga. I don't rem, I don't know yeah. if I'm gonna find out. It's, it's called, now, let me find called, out. You're in some called, secret group, and, no, and you're no, all no, up in no, there. No, 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 no. I'm not in any type of group. I'm not. I'm not like that. It's just like I just. I just understand it. You know, I understand yoga, and I'm, I'm furthering my 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 understanding in it. You know, it's not. I, you know, yoga is definitely, it's all about not being perfect. You know, it's, it's not being perfect. Right. You know, it's like. I, I, and by the way, I, I have I have taken yoga and um, I, I started okay. taking yoga during Christmas. And um, it's because my body was just breaking down, you know, just years and years of fighting. And somebody suggested yoga and I said, okay. And like you, I, um, it took me a lot quicker I, that day. I guess I just have good balance and I, I, I got to think boxing for that boxing you you know boxing you're supposed to have good balance and i was able to hit the poses i wasn't flexible Uh, by the end of the class you were hitting the the poses you were hitting the poses i I was hitting the poses i was touching (laughs) my toes i was doing all sorts of stuff and i was like you're you're full extension you're drifty you're drifty with with i I was doing everything (laughs) i I was i was doing everything i'm not even gonna lie and i was thinking oh man i love this and i'm like no but i'm not gonna like you, I was just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not ready for that life right now, <laughs> that yoga That's life. Funny, yeah. That's hilarious, yeah. But no, um, I definitely like this. You know, I can take that conversation, you know, a lot of different ways, and it can be a long conversation as well. But you know, yeah, uh, integrating integrating yoga into my training definitely helped uh, 100. Um, percent help it healed, healed my shoulder. My shoulder, has, I have no more problems out of my shoulder, and uh, you know, it, it, it's all good. You know, and yeah, you know, they want to be. This, do the teacher training and all that stuff, and that's a whole other conversation. But I'm definitely getting into it. I'm definitely learning. Uh, I did, you know, buy some other compression pants. I don't have, they're not yoga pants. They're compression pants, you know, and I. And like, hold on, he's trying to sound on manly. Hold on, they're, they're compression it's, pants. It's, yeah, they're compression pants. I mean, it's okay, I get it. I get MMA. it. They're, they're the, yeah, they're the same pants I use in, do for MMA, so. I, but anyway. It's, 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 know, it's okay, it's okay. We get, we get it. Yeah, exactly. I'm just so, kidding, but but let, let's let's talk about safe, man. You, you, I mean, you you found safe. I know you were, you were training somewhere yeah. prior, and you, and you found octagon. You found safe. What an awesome coach, huh? Yeah, he's he's a great coach. He's yeah. an awesome coach. Like, you know, here's here's the thing about coach. Like he he, if you are 100 percent down with you know with down with the program, you're down with MMA. You're you know you're gonna fight your ass off. He is 100 percent in all the way for you. He will do anything for you. You know, it's just like, mm-hmm. but if you kind of like slack off or you like, you haven't brought something to the table or something like that, like you just kind of like, you know, you're doing this, but you're really not, and you haven't been with him that long. It's like, you know, he kind of like, yep, there's, there's a there's a bigger there's a bigger goal at, at, in his mind, you know, and he sees it. You know, he's he's a, he's a big thinker. He's got a big mind, and, and he's 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 a he's a genius, really. He's like he he's a genius of MMA, and you know, he he understands the game to a level where it's like you can't you know don't waste his time type of thing. So. Yeah, right. you know, that's just how it is, man. And that's how you got to be to to really exist and to thrive in this world now. So, um, but that's how he is. You know, if you're if you're you know you with the program, you're gonna do. He'll do anything for you if you if you want to put the work in 100. percent You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, he's a great coach. He's a great coach. Been there for me. You know, uh, 
you know, he's definitely like a ride or die type person, you know, for sure. And, you know, I'm just, I'm happy to have found him. You know, I'm glad we crossed paths. Like, even though the, 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 the way that, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, came together was really, was, I guess it was kind of strange, but, uh, it really isn't strange at the end of the day. It's like, I was just trying to find a great coach and, and all that and somebody to be there for me and, you know, uh, and, and help me to reach, reach the, the level I'm trying to uh, attain. And he's the one. He's the one to, to help get, help get me there, you know. And nobody does it by themselves, you know. I've been to a right. lot of different gyms, you know. And I've had a, I've ran into a lot of great coaches, you know. You know, co- coaches I've met, you know, and a lot of them are great mm-hmm. guys. And uh, I'm not gonna say anything negative about anyone, you know. Um, right. You know, great uh, guy. Master was, was was a really good coach, you know. And I, I really I looked up to guy. I look up, you know. I still look up to him in, in certain ways, you know. Um, but it's like you know, just, I just wasn't. You know, that was part of my process, but that wasn't you know that wasn't the end result. You know, and uh, I'll, I'll back anything that, he, that he's trying to do if it's, if it's for, for positive or anything like that. I will. Uh, but it's like he's, he's not my coach now, you know, and even Coach Moeller, you know, he's a great great guy, great coach, you know, and, uh, you know, and I'm appreciative of, of, our, of our interactions together, and I'm thankful for everything he, he ever showed me, you know what I'm saying, but like, he, wasn't, he wasn't the end result, you know. Like, I finally got to the point where, like, Coach Davis is, like, coach Davis is, 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 my, is, my, is my coach. He's my MMA coach. He's, my, he's a mentor, you know. He's a great guy, you know, and that's just that's just how it is, man. That's just how it is, you know. He's uh, you and, know and, and and again and again fighting. I mean, like finding coaches is all oh, like finding a relationship. You know, you go through a season with with a certain mm-hmm. coach, and you're like, ah, oh, no, that's not one for whatever reason it didn't work out, split right. ways, you know, or whatever. And then you find this one. It's all about, like you said, that process of finding the one. You know, and yeah, and yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I, I hear a lot of great, a lot of great things about you know, uh, safe and you know he he produces a lot of champions and great fighters out of Octagon MMA. So and he's someone that one day I would like to interview and pick his brain. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah, seems yeah, like yeah. he would. It will be a great uh, conversation with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah, um, I, I, like I said, you, you come out of a great gym. You know, you you. you you have great fighters, great training partners, and you know, and and you also have a couple others that are, or maybe one more that's in the UFC with you. You're fighting next week, UFC 196 in Las Vegas. You're fighting Mike Powell, who's a veteran, and um, Sean. I've, I've, it's always been a pleasure to watch you fight. I, I've always had the, I've had the opportunities a few times to watch you fight live, and and your last fight before you went into the UFC was with Evan Cutts. Um, you know, um, Darwin, my husband, he knows you very well. He always has great things to say about you. You're just a humble guy, cool. great fighter, hard worker, and um, I, I know that you're going to do great things. Um, I, I know the process. I don't say I know the process because, you know, we have James Beck here, and he's just as hard working uh-huh. as ever. I get to see him personally up in front Who? to see how hard James Beck on hard, uh, how yeah, hard he oh, works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and that, 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 that dude's a, a workhorse. So I get to see, you know, what he's going through, what he feels like, the injuries and his ambition, his, his goals. I, I get to see that process. And, and it's a beautiful thing to see, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you're, you're seeing all that unfold, you know, from the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and the, you know, just, just to reach your goal. And with that being said, you know, UFC is probably one of the biggest, uh, is the biggest organization for any MMA fighter that want to be on. And, you know, you're there, you're in there, and I'm sure winning, you know, a championship in the UFC is probably another one in on your list. But after the UFC is over, I mean, is that, is, what other goals do you have other than just being in the UFC? Let's you know, end it like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I um, I've been training for a long time now, you know, and you know, it's, not, it's been like nine years since I've since I started training. So I'm definitely I'm in the in the fitness, you know, the MMA fitness realm. You know, I'm in that area. So I'm gonna I'm gonna continue that path. You know, there's other different you know business ventures I I I want to get into. You know, um, but it's like I, I'm so into MMA right now in terms of like what I have to do is the process, you know, I'm focused on, on this fight, you know, so there are, there are things, there are things I, I want to do. It'd be cool to even like, you know, uh, you know, 
dabble like into acting. You see like a lot of fighters too now like getting into acting and things like that. You know, it's not something that I'm 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 against at all. I'm, I would I want to get into uh, the different things like that, acting and mm-hmm. you know, uh, and also like coaching. I want to almost you know, I would like, love to coach a little bit more, but like it's hard to you know put put your uh, your eggs in a lot of different baskets when you're trying to focus on you know becoming one of the best in the world. You know that type of thing. Right. So, you know, um, I'm focused on, on what I have to do, and I'm trying. I'm learning as much as I can in, in the process. Just like, just like I was talking about yoga. You know, uh, yeah. Some people might think it's funny. Some people might think it's bullshit. No, but there's a lot of there's a lot of fighters that do yoga. A lot of fighters. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, it's I, I, the I, thing I, to know, do. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's been a benefit. It's been a blessing to my life. So I'm gonna continue this. And, and you know, kind of see where that that takes me in terms of like you know, I'm growing as a person. I may not do anything with yoga, but I plan on you know just taking that into my life but, and just being able to. Hold on, so, so, hold on, so hold on, hold on. So when you decide to after UFC and you decide to open your own yoga studio, let me know. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Hey, you know what's so funny? Kidding. Uh, I mean, I could yeah, I could talk, I could talk forever right 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 about this point, but um, uh, you know, uh. You might think it's funny, but no, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams. You remember, you remember Ricky Williams, right? No. Ricky Williams. It reminded me. Ricky Ricky Williams. My uh, he played for the University of Miami. Uh, you know, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. University of Miami. Yes, like, yes, yes. Uh, you know, he, uh, he. I don't want to say. I'm not saying anything negative about him. He did get in some trouble over marijuana and stuff like that. Blah, blah blah. That's in the past. But he, you know, he learned. He had a process too. But he is like he like totally changed his life, and he's. Like uh, he's a yoga like a yoga instructor, and he's like he feels like he's supposed to be a healer in life. He's a healer, you know, and he's like, you know, just totally totally changed his life, and he's just like, um, he's you know, I guess he's happy with where he is. Like, uh, and I don't know him, but I, I've watched like you know documentaries and things like that. I kind of kept up with him a little bit, um, just like of what I've seen in like interviews and stuff. But you know, that type of you know just seeing him grow in, in that process and, like, being so great at football and things like that and then him, you know, deciding to got to go away from that and, like, and be, like, a healer and, like, be an instructor and be, an, be a teacher and be a, you know, a student of life and just kind of, like, growing like that, um, that just mm-hmm. it, it motivated me, you know. You can you don't know where your path is. You don't know where you're going to, where, where you're, what you're going to do. Sometimes you have a plan. Right, and, and, and you, can, you can't knock, you, yeah, you, you can't knock somebody's calling if that's your calling. That's exactly, your calling. you can't. You can't. So. You know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. But yeah, there's a lot of different things I want to get into. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I see people all the time. I was like, I want, to, like, I, I, I want to help people more than anything. You know, and but before you right. can help, before you can help anyone, you have to be able to help yourself and, and stand, stand exactly. on your own two feet. Your own two feet. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Some people try to rush it. Like they want to help everybody else. It's like, what, what the, like, what, how are you gonna help me when you know, like you, like you can't, like you haven't, like I see that you haven't helped yourself. Like when somebody can see you haven't helped thing, yourself. I'm sorry. One thing I've learned when you're trying to help somebody, right, and and this is something I learned recently, is that when you want to help somebody so bad, right, and it want and they don't want that help, that it winds up changing you for the worse. Right. Yeah, that's true. So sometimes, and and that's why that saying goes: if you can't, how do you expect to help somebody when you can't help yourself? So you know at that at that very moment, you know you have to sit back and be like, man, the reason why I'm changing is because I need changing, not that exactly. person. Exactly. I do. So if you were that person, that strong enough person that you're, I don't want to say everybody's healed, but you, you know what I'm saying, then you're able to help somebody else. And during that process, you won't change during that process. Right, but if you start right, finding exactly. yourself changing, then there's some deep issues within yourself that you got to change. Exactly. That's true. That is that is that is 100 percent true. That's true. And I, I think that a lot of people. I think we. I think uh, we as human beings, like I think we all want to help each other. You know, I think we really mm-hmm. all do. It's and just, um, it's just our nature. You know, I think. It, it, it's our nature. I think we all want to help each other in some way, but it, like some people. Sometimes someone might help someone, they got hurt, and this and that, and that, and the next thing you know, they turn into, you know, they turn into like the opposite of that. They, you know, they they went to the dark side of the moon, you know. But I've I've been on the dark side of the moon before, and I'm not going back. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I mean when I say that, right? Like I'm talking about, you know, you kind of mm-hmm. like you get so negative and so resentful because you made so many different mistakes or whatever, and it's like, 
you know, it's like, man, you just like you just messed up, and it's like you can't you can't like even see yourself doing good. So it's like you see somebody else doing good, you're like, it's just it's, just, it's like you hate it because you know you had the potential. You know what I'm saying? I've been on that I've been on that star side of the moon, but guess what? That's where that's where the grace of God comes in. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm right. thankful. Like, going back to what I was saying earlier, I'm thankful that I'm still in the grace of God. I realize my potential, realize what He gave me, realize I still have a lot to bring to the table, and I, I can still make an impact on. Uh, I'm not trying to change the world. I definitely not trying to change the world, but I'm definitely trying to, you know, become the best version of myself so I can have the most to give. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't have realized right. realized that without 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 God and without knowing that. Uh, you know, I'm still in grace. I'm still, you know, I feel like I'm 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 saved like through the blood of Christ. That, that type of thing. You know, that I feel like that. You know, and that's another conversation in itself too. But um, you know, that's right. That's I mean, it's, at, it's one of the things that 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 God says: feed my sheep. Right. But you got, yeah, but you yeah, being exactly. his sheep too, right? You being him, part of his sheep, you got to feed yourself so you can feed his sheep. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you can't be going off. You can't be yeah. going off empty and trying to give. Someone. You can't give, but you can't do it if you, what you don't have. Exactly, exactly. You know what? On that note, Sean Spencer, you're always a, ble- a pleasure to talk to. This is probably one of the best interviews I've ever done in five years that I've been doing this. I, I could sit here and talk to you forever. You know, this is why we call yeah, it Global I, yeah. Fight Talk. It's just, yeah, it's just not about, you know, fight, the fight ass. I mean, everything you do in life is fighting, everything you do. Yeah. It's just yeah. not okay. being in the cage or in the ring. So Global Fight Talk is just not about fighting itself, it's just life, period. So I really appreciate you taking the time, especially a week out of, you know, prior to your fight, to sit down or, you know, and talk to us about it or me per se, and I wish you the best of luck next week. I'm definitely going to be watching. I'm, I always support, you know, DFW fighters, you know, I'm from out this area, so I always got to support when they're fighting. Is this going to be on, is this going to be on the main card? Is this on Fight Pass? Yeah, it's funny that you ask. It's, it's going to be on the main card. I'm setting the night off. Uh, you know, I'm setting the pay-per-view card off. I am Awesome. I'm gonna do it, man. I'm. I love setting the tone and love setting the pace, man. Because like it being, you know, if you can be the pacemaker and like you set that set that pace high, you know, then the rest of the cards gonna be great too. So I'm I'm happy to be able to set the pace the pace of, of the night uh, on the on the on the main card pay per view, and uh, it's gonna be mm-hmm. it's gonna be a great fight, great night of fights, and great. It's gonna be great, you know. And I'm 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 really you know I'm really excited to be able to do it, and uh, I'm enjoying the process of, of you know what I'm having to do to. To, to get to a high level and uh, it's, it's going to be good. February 6th, MGM Grand, Sean Spencer versus Mike Powell. There you have it. Any last minute shout outs before we wrap this up? Um, You know, there's a lot of people I can, you know, give a shout out to or whatever, but, you know, I'll keep it kind of short, but like definitely giving glory, all the glory to God, all the glory to God. And then um, also uh, all my training partners that have helped me out, man, uh, you know, Sean Holden, uh, uh, Charles Bird, uh, Jeff Neal, uh, Ramez. I forget Ramez's last name. Uh, forgive me for that. But Ramez, uh, you know, um, uh, who else? Uh, Alejandro, um, you know, just all the guys that have stepped in, in there with me to help me for this camp. You know, there's a lot of guys, uh, that even smaller weight guys, that, that have helped in, in different ways. You know, like Miles Jara is another one. Um, you know, Clayton Mize is, is, is another guy. Uh, George Fakararu is another guy. Um, you know, there's a lot of different different guy, guys I can name, and if I leave anybody out, leave anybody out, I'm not trying to single anyone out or anything like that. Jason Sampson has helped out in, in different ways too, and then, uh, you know, just just everybody, man. Coach, just coach, everybody, coach all your Bertolino. coaches and everything, yeah, right? <laughs> coach, yeah, coach, yeah, Coach Bertolino. I mean, you know, my my parents, my family, my mom, my, my dad, my my brother, my sister. You know, everybody helps out in different ways. You know, whether they just support me or they don't, you know, it's all in my mind and like, I'm just going forward, man, that's it. Well, there you have it. Next week, Sean Spencer versus Mike Powell, MGM, MGM Grand. He's going to set off the pay, start off, you know, he's going to be on, on the main card and um, it's going to be explosive. It's, it's always, um, you're, you're an exciting fighter and um, it's always exciting to, to watch you fight and do your thing. So I wish you the best of luck um, from here in, in, in your career. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Like, we could talk forever, you know, but... Definitely. 
But yeah, okay. Cool. That that would that would be yeah. another uh, another time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For well, sure, you know. For sure. All right, cool. Well, you take care, Sean, and um, hopefully we, um, we'll be talking after your victory. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. I'll thank you. you. Bye. Okay. Okay. Right, bye. bye.